rajin. Welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday, the only space where you get informed matters pertaining business at Michelle Oshiro is where you can find me across all my social media platforms and you can reach out to our social uh, uh, media handles at Y254 channel and head on to our Facebook page. We have a question for you at Y254 channel. We're asking, how often do you buy new clothes? Where do you get them? How often do you buy new clothes and how and where do you get them we need to access things at a very affordable prices and most most importantly if it's quality and it's still affordable we want that right so head on to our facebook page that is at y254 channel and tell me where do you find your clothes quality and still affordable so remember you can keep this conversation going as simple as at y254 channel at michelle ashira so my guest today our first guest uh, is um, uh, a founder uh, she's the founder of kenya uh, sorry, founder of Kerry Design Africa. Uh, she's a professional model and a self-made fashion designer. And before she founded Kerry Design Africa, she worked with Kenya Airways. And prior, worked as a school principal. Look, if you want to shift from any career that you're into, she's the right person to talk to because she's going to take us through all this uh, transition journey. And how was it actually easy? She's going to tell us more about that. So, ladies... Uh, gentlemen, for lovers of fashion, I introduce to you uh, Sarah Kerubo. Thank you very much for creating time. Thank you so much for hosting me here. All right, so Sarah, you have uh, done a couple of uh, wow changes in your career from being a school principal to working with uh, Kenya. Airways. Kenya Airways to <laughs> now owning uh, the Kerry Design Africa uh, fashion house. So how did you manage to transition from one career to another? I can say that was the hardest thing I've ever done <laughs> in my life. Because okay. you see, those are two different um, areas. Those are two different fields. Mm -hmm. And every field had, has its own scope, code of con conduct, dress code. Everything is just different. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, let me say, like transitioning from a principal to Kenya Airways, mm -hmm. Kenya Airways happened in between the principaling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I I quit. Like I quit. Let me say I took I took a break from being the school principal. I went to Kenya Airways. I studied. I got employed there. I worked there, and then. Life happened, I came back to the school. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a couple of transitions. Wait, Sarah. Uh, before we even go, uh, go ahead, mm -hmm. you were a principal for approximately over a decade. That's nine years. Yeah. Almost a decade. Then from uh, being a principal to now going to work at uh, the KQ. So then back to now starting your own fashion house. So... What was holding you back all this time around? Why didn't you jump off from like what let you love? Let me say from yeah. from high school. Let me say that that's when much happened. Okay. From high school, um, I just got direct into this the school principal. I can say we were we didn't have much money. We couldn't. I couldn't do anything at that point because um, my parents could not, like they had so many bills, like everyone was in school, they were paying so many school fees. So I was, I was just doing that because mm -hmm. that's what I had to do. I didn't, I considered myself like I didn't have a life, like I didn't have anything else to do. So that's what I was doing until later I discovered really I need to do this because this is what drives me. Like when I dress, when I look good, <laughs> I feel good. So I decided to just venture into fashion design. Oh, so the passion was there from uh, from way back. Yeah. All right, so I'd like to find out, for someone who is watching, they would like to find out a couple of things that you learned along the way when it comes to 
uh, shifting from one career to another. What are some of uh, probably tips you could give out for someone who's looking forward to transition? Um, first of all, follow your heart. If, if your heart is in it, then go for it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, don't just jump. Like, have something in mind, like, have a process. Okay, transitioning is a process which needs um, so much time mm -hmm. to adjust and fit in. So, like, for me, from being a principal to a fashion designer, I started doing um, fashion design. I, I started designing clothes while I was a principal. Mm -hmm. So, by the time I was quitting the job, I already had something to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't just quit and start. Oh, so when yeah. did uh, uh, Kerry Design uh, Africa start? And what was the initial capital? <laughs> you don't mind sharing. It's okay, we can keep it on silent. Okay. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. So um, the initial capital, for me, I didn't have much because I was selling hair clips, I was selling um, bow ties. You know, a bow tie is only 100 bob or 200 bob. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine saving those little coins and a hair clip is 100 bob or 60 bob actually so i was saving 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 uh but then by the time i was now starting i had less than ten thousand. i had less than ten thousand. i went and rented a bed sitter i paid a rent and deposit and then i remained with zero bob okay. but then i prayed I didn't even have curtains. Mm -hmm. I prayed, I told God, you know what? I'm going to start from here and I don't know where I'm going to get money, but I know you will provide. That same day, a client walked in and she ordered several things. And that's how I can say I started off. Okay, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, looking back, uh, how, how long have you been into business? Into business, this is my third year officially. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, so from uh, the initial point of starting off, from the bed sitter mm -hmm. to now uh, being in a position where you have clients internationally, I'd like to find out how was it for you when you were breaking into the market, when you're just putting your foot uh, into the market, just locally, how was the response? I can say, for me, before I quit, I was posting things on social media and I could design clothes for myself and I post. So I used to see people responding well, even though, you know, you get one client and another and another. But you see, I think taking risk makes you um, um, think, think outside beyond, the okay. box. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So like I was paying uh, my rent around 8,000 and then I could get clients around that amount. But then when I moved higher, I've been climbing like my, my brand has been growing. So the higher the bills, the more I think outside the box, the more I get more clients. Yeah, I can say that's what has been going on with my brand. All right. Yeah. So uh, for someone who is watching this and they love fashion, they like they love looking good. They love to just venture into this industry. I'd like to find out: uh, Did you go for any uh, fashion design training institution? How did you learn to just create your own uh, pieces when it comes to uh, design? First of all, I didn't go to any fashion and design institution mm -hmm. i didn't learn anywhere um when i started i was just tracing my own clothes i trace i i do it i mm -hmm. make it mm -hmm. and then it becomes small i start wondering where where did i go wrong but i didn't know anything about allowances i didn't know anything about finishing any any i didn't know anything so but then with every error i managed to get a solution until someday i bumped into a facebook page a group of Nigerian designers where they post tutorials and then I also learned about YouTube later so I perfected my art from YouTube and Facebook okay so products yeah. of YouTube <laughs> <laughs> yes YouTube <laughs> contributed like 80 percent okay do I do it yeah. yourself so uh, so we have so many fashion designers in, in the country and also uh, I'd like to find out what makes uh, Sarah, Sarah Kirubo quite different what makes Kerry Design Africa uh, different from any other fashion house I can say it's unique in its own way 
um, personally, I started my brand out of disappointments. And every day I try as much as I can not to disappoint any client. Okay. So what I do is I keep my word. I keep my word. That is like, if I tell you on Tuesday, you come on Tuesday, you find your outfit. If it's not ready, then I will tell you in advance mm -hmm. that your outfit is not ready, but I'll give you a date, like, flexible with you. I won't, I won't... I'm like so sure delay. most of us have experienced uh, the, the disappointment yeah. from tailors. They tell, uh, they tell you tomorrow, we'll come you know, tomorrow. I, I know how it feels, because, <laughs> you know, when, you, you, when you've been in those shoes, mm -hmm then you will not want to do the same thing to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Also, I want just to build a good brand that everyone can trust. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, the kind of clothes I design, I design to fit like, you, you come, you fit and go. You don't, I, don't, I don't design clothes that are not really fitting to your mm -hmm. measurements. So, you know, there are those clothes uh, tailors make or designers make and then you have to do so many adjustments mm -hmm. mine they're like you come fit and go all right uh, i like the fact that you've mentioned uh, something which is important because uh, i was thinking right now during this uh, time of the global pandemic covid19 and uh, this limitation of uh, just people gathering so if i would like to uh, probably want you to create a certain piece for me i would like to slave and during this hard <laughs> time <laughs> So how do people go about it? Uh, do I send measurements to you? How, how does that work? Okay, you can send your measurements to me, but I prefer taking uh, the measurements myself, okay. just to be sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm taking orders like I'm flexible, mm -hmm. I'm moving around, taking clients' orders, and I deliver. Yeah. Ah, so while we are seated here, Kerry, uh, Kerry Fashion Design, uh, Kerry Sarah here. Africa. Yeah, <laughs> so here, Sarah looking all uh, humble and everything. You have clients from all over, like uh, US, for instance. That's what we were actually talking about uh, prior to this conversation. And uh, I was asking, how did you, how were you able to tap into the international market? Um, most of my my clients overseas are Kenyans mm -hmm. and um, I don't know how they find me but I always get those calls hey someone is traveling to US and she needs this and that and that and mm -hmm. I need this and that and that so I usually do and I give them they deliver like they go with them yeah okay. so I guess they tell a friend to tell a friend yeah <laughs> All right. So before we check out a uh, couple of your of your work, your masterpiece, I'd like to find out: Have you been able to showcase any of your design, probably in a fashion show, uh, just displaying your work? Yes, I've displayed my work in um, Kenya Fashion Awards, mm -hmm. and then I was organizing my own fashion show that was supposed to happen on March twenty third, but Corona happened, mm -hmm. so the fashion show is on hold. But then I'm thinking to do it online. All right, so speaking about the delaying mm -hmm. on uh, your fashion show because of the pandemic, I'd like to find out what are some of other challenges that you've, you're facing? And uh, if you have employees, how are they coping during these times of uh, uh, economic times of the pan during this time of pandemic? I can say um, most, like the fashion industry is, has been hit by this, COVID-19 pandemic because mm -hmm. at first, let me say for myself, uh, when the first case was announced, that was in March, mm -hmm. mid-March, everything came at a standstill. No client came, no client ordered anything. The clothes I had made for clients, no one came to pick them. They have been lying there. Okay. They, from March, April, May, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is funny, you know. Um, no weddings, no functions, people are not going to work, so definitely they will not buy clothes. Yes. Like, it's not an essential. Mm -hmm. People are like, hey, there's a lockdown coming, so they're preparing for... The basic. Keeping more food, important. more food, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so such like... So, um, really, it affected my brand, mm -hmm. and at some point, I sat down and I said, you know, my shop was in town mm -hmm. at Sky Plaza, but then I sat down with my landlord and I told her, I'm going to go, but when things normalize, mm -hmm. if my shop will be vacant, I'll come back. Okay. So it's still vacant. Mm -hmm. She still wants me back, but um, 
I'm out for a while. I'm working from Kasarani mm -hmm. right now. And then when COVID will be over, when the situation will normalize, I'll come back to town. All right. I've seen a very uh, huge difference and growth compared to when you, uh, I'm about to say when we started. I feel <laughs> part of this. <laughs> when you started, uh, that's three years ago, uh, mm -hmm. from uh, just a bare seater in Kasarani to right now owning even a sh uh, your own space here in town. How does that make you feel when you look at the growth and where you started? I feel that God has blessed me enough. Like, mm -hmm. God loves me so much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not easy for someone to start something and it peaks. And actually, you continue growing up. You know, some, some brands may not peak. Others may collapse along the way. Others may hit a plateau and... But me, thank God. It's it's God's favor, <laughs> especially for you, because you uh, you move from employment where you actually assured of uh, of income every single month to yeah. venturing into something which you are not sure of the <laughs> outcome. Sure. So, but actually, it turned out very well. Uh, so we uh, let's check out some of Kerry uh, Kerry uh, Design um, Africa. That's on Instagram, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's check out a sample of her amazing um, masterpiece. So, okay, so one thing that I've noticed just by uh, a, sp a sprung look of this display is that there's a lot of African uh, uh, themed when it comes to your pieces. Do you feel like uh, Kenyan and African, uh, when it comes to fashion, we should, we should put ourselves way more out there? <laughs> I think, okay, there's something about African. Mm -hmm. Most people love African pieces mm -hmm. and, um, you know, African prints, there's so many prints out there and okay. you can have the same design, but when you see another print, you feel, no, no, I should have that too, you know? Yeah. So personally, I give clients what they want. So mm -hmm. most of my clients love African prints. So that's what I I do most. Okay, so uh, that is a masterpiece. The the blue uh, the blue uh, gown there. So yeah. probably you can take us through uh, uh, through the blue gown and uh, tell us about the fabric and uh, how long did it take to just come up with that particular uh, gown? Okay, you see these gowns. I I just buy fabrics okay without any design in mind mm -hmm. and then when i sit down i just start imagining like what will look good on something personally i use myself i use myself when i'm designing clothes so most of the clothes i design they're my size because mm -hmm. i need to fit i need to make all the changes if it will look good on me then i know mm -hmm. that design will look good on somebody else yeah sometimes a, a complicated design can take me even two days three days sometimes <laughs> if i can lose the psych along the way and i put it aside and i come back one week later to finish it yeah but just when they're mine but for clients i finish it and move on to the next okay so for yeah. <laughs> so it's different time frame when, when it's uh when a when a gown is made compared to the design that that is yeah, yeah every design will take different time okay uh, yeah. maybe you can check out some of your uh some of your others so let's look at the ladies up here okay um, quite moving okay tell me about that look there's the gentleman and, and, the lady. and the lady. That is like for couples. Mm -hmm. Couple girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, you uh -huh. know, um, most couples want matchy matchy outfits. Mm -hmm. And I've done uh, outfits of different fabrics, not mm -hmm. African ones, but most people don't take them so serious compared to when, when you do an African piece. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh. That's amazing. So, uh, so, uh, okay, uh, we moved quite fast. So, ah, I love that look. I, I feel like the lady in uh, the blazer uh, with a couple of prints on, it feels, it gives a vibe of you can wear it in an office and also an, an, an outdoor event. Probably, probably you can tell us, uh, like, events. This is actually a shirt. occasion. <laughs> oh, it looks like a blazer. <laughs> I was almost sure it was a blazer. It looks it like a blazer. Like shirt. <laughs> wow. Yeah, amazing. you can wear with a, a plain, either plain jeans, uh -huh. a plain khaki trouser, a plain skirt. Okay. Yeah, you can also wear inside a, a plain suit if you want. Okay, take us through. Yeah. 
take us through the your pieces. Yeah, she can scroll downwards. Okay. <coughs> uh huh. Uh, maybe you could tell us more about. Oh, why? Uh, okay, let's look at the the lady. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This particular lady wanted this outfit for a wedding. She was a guest and she wanted an African touch. Mm -hmm. So I made the skirt for her. She blended with this with the top and blazer. Mm -hmm. This one, this was her send off party. Yeah, she was getting married to Tanzania and they take things very serious. So right. I made that for her. Okay. Um, this was a church outfit. This one Quite I was simple. actually uh -huh. going for a wedding. Mm -hmm. Those are kids over there. And then this was for Aruracio. The the plus one had mm -hmm. an outfit of that. This was a wedding. The groomsmen I made for them. This was the same wedding. The kids had this color on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that I've noticed is that uh, it's all bridal. First of <laughs> all, uh, is it like uh, a niche for Kerry Design Africa or? I can say I do a lot of bridal. Okay. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> I do a lot of bridal. Okay, we are back. Now you can show <laughs> whatever you want to show us, okay, Lissara. <laughs> well, like, like, like the wedding, the blue wedding. Um, the blue dress. The blue. The blue gown. The blue gents. The, 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 the gents Oh, the gentlemen, the, the two, okay. Yeah, like that wedding, I dressed everyone except oh, the are. bride. This uh -huh. one, yeah. Uh -huh. I did the groomsmen, the, the groom himself, the kids, the matrons, the ushers, mm -hmm. everyone except the, the bride. So mm -hmm. sometimes I think it's just what I do that markets me. Okay. The quality of my outfits and my service. Uh, so how do you ensure, like, uh, when it comes to your clients, what is one thing that, uh, as K Design Africa, that you ensure that uh, this is our way to ensure that we retain our clients? But most of the cases, it's beyond our <laughs> <laughs> beyond of us just, uh, you know, holding on to them. It's at the end of the day, it's their decision. But what's a couple of things that uh, back at your fashion house that you ensure that you retain your clients? Mm, I can say that I don't really do much, mm -hmm. but I think um, just the service I offer, by the time the client is leaving, like the, by the time the client is walking out of the door with a smile on, on his or her face, it's just an assurance that... Um, just when, when a client is satisfied, you're sure the client will come back for more. But if the client goes away disappointed, feeling frustrated, then you know you've lost the client. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be hard work getting the client back. That is true. Most of the cases, especially when you're disappointed, you tend to like looking for somewhere else. But I would like to find yeah. out where do you see the future of fashion that is in Kenya and uh, most definitely where Kerry Design Africa, uh, where do you see the future? I can say, <coughs> I can say the future for fashion in Kenya. It really depends entirely on yourself. Um, like this season, it's, let's say, survival for the fittest. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're going to pull through this season, then you can survive any other pandemic or any other calamity ahead of us. Personally, I have learned and years down the line, I'm really thinking of how I'm going to get a piece of land somewhere and build the biggest, the biggest uh, fashion house ever. <laughs> and we'll be right here uh, looking at those particular achievements <laughs> and actually uh, just celebrating. Uh. I'm hoping God will help me. <laughs> Absolutely. We hope so. So, so I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, just our question on Facebook. We were asking, how often do you buy new clothes? How often do you buy new clothes or do you make your own clothes? Okay, for me, I can say it's really different. You know, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm, I design clothes. Okay. I love it. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, no, 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 I can't wear this. Mm -hmm. I need to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? <laughs> so I feel that it's too pretty, too cute. Mm -hmm. I need to sell it. Okay. Get more money. Get a better one. I mean, me sometimes I end up uh, 
uh, getting myself maybe a piece or two in a month. Yeah, I think I don't love myself so much. I love Which you should. clients too much. Okay. <laughs> People are that way. Clients are always right when yeah. it comes to business also. Me, I think when I, when, I, when I design new clothes, I'm like, no, no, no. I would love someone else to look mm -hmm. so pretty in this done. And then I'll make myself something else. And then when I make that something else, I'm like, I no, no, no. <laughs> but in the process, you're actually pushing yourself to actually create, uh, uh, to, cre to look for more creativity, uh, creative ideas to put on onto your masterpieces. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Sarah, we had an amazing time looking at your designs and masterpieces. And people back at home should definitely keep tabs on you. So probably this is the time you could give us your website or your social media handles and how they can reach out to you. Okay. Um, I have a website. Mm -hmm. I have a page on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all at Kerry Designs Africa. My phone number is 0712-357-420. Okay. Yeah. So guys, make sure you follow up uh, on uh, Sarah's uh, amazing design on all across the social media platform. Do you have a, uh, like a physical location? Yes. A location? Yes, yes, yes. Currently, I'm located at Kasarani. Mm -hmm. After COVID, I will mm -hmm. open a branch. A branch. Looking forward to <laughs> in us. town. <laughs> Looking forward to us. That. Thank you very yes. much for creating time to be with us. So, guys, that's all we had for you on these particular matters on authentic fashion. So, make sure you stay tuned. Another interview will be coming your way. Remember, you can follow us across all our social media handles. That is at Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. So, right now, we're taking a short musical break. We'll be right back. <laughs>